Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second series and final series of the day between London Conspiracy and Alternate Attacks. I'm Lama Downunder, I'm joined by Scant, and I'm really not sure what to expect Some because London ringing. Conspiracy have been in a slump. Uh, yep, yeah. and I'm rooting for Polish Dota 2. I, I'm a fan of Team Alternate. Wow, you just you put it all out there. You just want Pol Radiant the Polish team. people to win? What? Yeah. Did... <laughs> well, I want. I want under recognized and developed scenes to shine a bit more, be recognized a bit more. I mean, there's, you know, my my scene is is like that too. And... <laughs> I don't think your scene exists, actually. <laughs> well, well, there you go. Thanks for making my point. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, honestly, I don't know. I I think you're kind of right. Lion Conspiracy been all over the place recently. They've had some poor results, especially in Dream League, and I've watched quite a few of their games. I for me, what stands out is that Baby Knight seemed very inconsistent in the mid lane. Like, he's had some games where he's been remain. absolutely sterling, like, beyond god, like, 20 kills on Queen of Pain or whatever. Five and other games, I've seen him remain. really get shut down, have a lot of early deaths and not be affected at all. Um, it's gonna be a test for him here, in that respect, because Supreme is usually laning mid for Team Alternates, and Supreme is really one good. of the most consistent mid laners I've actually seen in Europe. <sighs> Sup oh, and they did not ban, ban his Invoker. Supreme's Invoker is pretty well known. Um, I'd also like to see Alternate do well. They're a team that's stuck together. They're another one of those teams that I've seen play through a lot of different Dire tournaments, team. getting better and better. And hopefully they'll be able to take some here. But also I, do, I don't want London Conspiracy to, you know, get stuck in a slump either because they were another team that was up and coming. They were doing ridiculously well. And as you said, it feels like maybe a couple of the losses they took, uh, maybe it was some of the teams, they just weren't feeling as comfortable. Oh, but you know, Lana Conspiracy still, to some extent, you know, let's talk in political Ten talk. They, they still, to some extent, represent the establishment, you know, Swedish people, Scandinavian, <laughs> Danish. What, this is, you know, the thing that Alternates and Ad Finum have in common is they're from different places and yeah. they don't get that much recognition, but they've been working at it and they've been doing really well. And that's why, you know, we've got, we got to be happy when we see Ad Finum succeed. We've got to be happy if we see Alternates succeed. And you're right, Supreme Invoker, straight up, even before the Earth Spread, just to make a point about. You know, you let through Earth Spirit, but just just to be clear, it's the Invoker that really you, you shouldn't have let through. Yeah, I mean, they're not wrong. Supreme's Invoker, it's won games against Liquid. That's that's a testament to the strength of that of Supreme on that hero. London Conspiracy, though, they've already got some good tools in their belt, you know? If they end up being able to find someone who can roam to mid easily, Nature's Prof can also TP in, help deal with the Invoker. Or also, let's say Earth Spirit overextends, Nature's Prophet can rotate in there and maybe pick up a kill here or there. Also, uh, traditionally a hero who isn't punished too much, the Nature's Prophet. I made a terrible joke last time I cast this team, but it wasn't with you, so I'm going to make it again now, which is that... Uh, <laughs> yes. Do you remember when, when Secret won the Shanghai Major? They asked Puppy how he felt, and he said, I feel supreme. That's yes. what he said. That's So my theory is that he was talking about, you know, now I know what it's like to be supreme from Team Alternate, because that guy is such a winner at life. He's just always winning stuff, and winning a major makes you feel like him. Radiant That's how good he is. Yeah, I think it's really... It's going to be a little bit off topic, but I really like when players have interesting names like that, like Supreme, like uh, Eternal Envy, right? I, you can definitely read into it in more ways than you can read into, you know, Puppy. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... Loves dogs. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> apparently it's a misspelling of puppet or something as well too. So it's like, oh, I just always was like, yeah, he likes dogs. And he's like, nah, I just like the word puppet or something. But yeah, let's get back into it. Enigma going to be the pickup here for London Radiant Conspiracy. And this is the patch for Greed. So I don't, unless back. Alternate really do a lot of work with this Earth Spirit, Elsie might not be punished for the Enigma pickup. I mean, typically, historically, you wouldn't see a team start with Nature's Prophet, with Enigma especially because... Nature's Prophet wants to be able to retreat into the jungle. In this Ten patch, it's changed a bit. There's like, there's a bit more jungle to go around. So even having that jungle in Enigma Five doesn't necessarily remaining. cause issues for Nature's Prophet, even if he has to dip back into the jungle later on. I do feel like as the mid game Reserve progresses, time. it does affect their farming pattern somewhat, so that they're both in the same game. Um, but it's not a huge deal. I think it's, it's very, very interesting. Enigma is a hero that, out of all the heroes in the game, maybe most guarantees that your team has an edge in a 5v5 fight. Possibly Darkseer can compete. Those are like the only two I would Dire say. And Nature's Prophet is the best split pushing it. So you start with this one two punch which says to the enemy team, well, you know, what you're gonna do to us because we can take you on a 5v5, we can split you up, 
like good luck coming up with a plan this time. Yeah. So nice ban outs there. The puck, I guess someone that probably just invoke a supreme doesn't want to play against puck since you can't punish him much. And uh, ten seconds remaining. What's up next? Beast monster banned out. I like that one too for alternate avenge. Radiant. That's. Uh... For me, that's kind of curious. It's not the kind of support I would expect. I was actually about to say that I thought Alternate would try and focus on the lane stage very hard now. Maybe even run an aggressive dual lane, or I suppose they could still do that with the Earth Spirit, because that's what the early Nidge Prophet Enigma kind of gives you. It gives you that opening and they've got a jungler. At the same time, I think Lion Conspiracy picked the Enigma because they know there's already that Earth Spirit pick. Yes. Which is, even though it's a roaming hero, it's not really... Seconds remaining. It, 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 like... The information available to you is that they have an Earth Spirit, and that's Five actually not a hero that shuts down Enigma in the jungle compared to maybe other roamers could. Yeah. And it's not, yeah, it's, it's not like the Bounty Hunter, right? You, you, if the Earth Spirit finds the Enigma in the jungle, the odds of killing the Enigma are pretty low. Do you think this could be a carry yeah. Venge? Maybe yeah, maybe, because, I mean, Venge certainly, like, on that same thought, Venge is not a support that, like, oh, we're going to punish the fact that we know that they're off lanes Nature's Prophet and they have a jungler. It's, it's, it's good to swap black hole. That's like the only thing I could think in terms in relation to Enigma. Yeah, I mean it's a BKB piercing disable. Perhaps that yeah. is why they wanted it, just wanting to make sure that when that time comes, but of course it just means that Enigma has to make sure he grabs the venge, right? It's not once he gets that BKB, it's still not super scary. Yeah. Well before the B yeah. Excuse me, before the BKB, they've got actually quite a few options here with the Earth Spirit as well. So Enigma's definitely going to have to get that BKB, probably back straight into BKB in this game. Um, same applies to the Fiend's Grip, they've got ways to deal with them from long range. Five seconds I wonder remaining. if Alternate are not just setting up for... We'll probably see with the next pick, and it's interesting that the Beastmaster was banned Reserve last. Maybe that's what they're setting up for, that kind of Venge plus Invoker plus one other key kind of pushing hero. And all of a sudden, their their plan is to get ahead of the timings. Um, Enigma, sure, Enigma ulti is good in a 5v5 standoff, but it has a very long cooldown. And Nature's Prophet, in terms of the split push game, doesn't start that early on in the game. So maybe the approach for Alter would be focus lane stage and try and have that, that, that kind of early game push lineup that punishes the enemy team, which I, I think Lana Conspiracy is actually potentially quite weak to that at this point in time. Yeah, it's really... It's, it's kind of an interesting way to go about the early push lineup with the Earth Spirit as well, but what's your AoE? I guess they could try to pick up Alina mid or something for London Conspiracy for some sort of wave clear, but I'm I'm not sure how effective that'll be. It's a, just a very interesting draft out of alternate. The Earth Spirit and the Venge, not two I was expecting to see together today. Also super interesting seeing this fan, and we were talking about this in the previous series. Like Sometimes we can get bogged down talking about direct counters, and usually... Things that can control Sven through Five his BKB or counters to him, or Black Hole can, Fiend's Grip can, even Sprout can. So you'd think in that regard, Reserve oh wow, there's time. so many counters to Sven. But the point in the Sven pick here, again, is that his, it's just his timing. It's the points at which Sven gets... I mean, firstly, Sven with the cleave early on is quite good against the Treants in lane. The Warcry also helps for pushing. But it's also just the timing. This is a, this is a carry hero that, when uninterrupted, which is quite likely in this game since the enemy team is a jungler, he's going to get that key peak timing where you can group with this team and push very, very early, 20, 25 minutes. And I think that might be a timing before Lana Conspiracy have, have an answer in the form of the split push from the Edge's Prophet. Seconds, might be a timing before they have the BKB on the Enigma. Wind Ranger at your and it's, it's something they're going to have to be concerned about. And what, <laughs> speaking of heroes good against Sven, yet another, I mean, Sven is not an MKB buying hero typically. So good luck hitting Wind Ranger if you're Sven. Additionally, Radiant someone who, I mean, this now is just a skill matchup in mid, and one that probably both of these players are very familiar with. Invoker versus Windrunner in mid is just kind of like, hey, I do this all the time. If this you... is a hero that I specifically Dial saw Fina you know, do exceptionally well on. I, I don't remember against which team, but it was again one of the recent Dream League games. He absolutely carried his team to victory on the Windrunner. Like, all of his item timings were perfect, and, every, you know, right after he got his blink, he was hitting all the perfect shackles. I think he was... He's, he was setting. Re I mean, I was studying that game, and I remember saying that he was setting records of some kind. I don't remember which. Maybe I should, but he he got lots of kills, did lots of things. He's he's clearly very comfortable in the hero. Radiant An alternate round of their draft of the bat, which I think bat is actually a 
pretty great pick here. Sure, the band's already there to defensively try and counter him, but Banner Conspiracy don't have a. They've got tools, but they, to me, they don't have like an overall draft that's going to like we stand together and this is our plan when you come at us. And especially, especially a draft like that, when you pull someone off, it really can crumble. When like the Ten the links between remaining. the heroes in the draft itself are kind of tenuous to start with. Five seconds remaining. Did they actually just do the venge to make sure that they could Reserve time. pick the bat Five uncontested? I mean, it could be part of it. it. Certainly could be part of it. And Lana Conspiracy go back for the Spectre. So this is like... I almost feel like in a weird way, Lana Conspiracy's whole draft is geared around not losing and then inevitably winning as a result of not losing. Um, Spectre's kind of the, the, the carry flavor of the the patch. And for exactly the reason that it doesn't really matter that much how, much this, how well the Spectre does in lane. As soon as you get level 6, you come back into it whenever your team is a pick-off, and you can get pick off certainly with this team. Every time you get a Shack or Fiend's Grip or whatever, and Spectre just wants in. Spectre's got that in inevitability if the game goes very late, even against a hero like Spain, especially if you have a Wind Ranger with you. And they've got, like, the big spells, which which scale really wide. Just, again, I, I, I still feel like, in terms of the, the togetherness, the, like, remaining. this is how these heroes synergize from the get-go. Five step by step, remaining. it's not as clear for me on Lana Conspiracy. I think a hero like Bat really can dis disrupt a, a draft that's not entirely together in its setup. I also think it's problematic because Spectre, yes, Spectre really punishes you for mistakes. We talked about it last game in the Drow strat where, you know, you give them an inch and because it's a Drow push strat, they take a mile. But Spectre does the same business. If you don't actually kill her, she gets a haunt off. Suddenly she's sitting like 2,000 gold richer after a team fight. It can be very problematic, and for alternate, if they don't get their push timing window done well, if that's what they do want. I mean, they could just pick up the Spectre a bunch, that's certainly an option, but they might be in trouble if they don't play this. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Actively. I'm not too sure if, if Steph Star's going to be active on the Enigma early on, very involved in ganking, but I, again, I feel like Bats and a Earth Spirit, the same combination we saw earlier, actually, I think. I, I think a Bats and an Earth Spirit can do really well against the Spectre and a Bane. Uh, of course, Enigma can make rotations, the Nation's Prophet could even TP in. But just 2 for 2, I think the Bat and the Earth Spirit could, could really bully the, the Spectre. Definitely. That's another good point that we didn't think about. And we've seen this lane before earlier today, right, where there was the Bat Rider Earth Spirit, which you do, you do roll on people, they're slowed, you burn them to death. Fun, exciting times. Looks like we might have the contest at the top rune. We've got two stuns and a slow. Let's see if Baby Knight really wants that rune. Oh, he's going in for it. There's going to be the first stun opening on Baby Knight. The bounty will be picked up both going to alternate, and there's nothing they can do here. I'm pretty surprised London Conspiracy went for that. London Conspiracy are doing something very interesting with their lanes as well. It looked like they were going to dodge, and now they're switching back. Maybe they had anticipated being dodged, because the Nature's Prophet ran almost all the way to the bot lane, came back across the top lane, now Spectre and Bane are going bot, but they're going to be very late, which... Honestly, if we're talking about Earth Spirits and Bat being able to give them a hard time, being late for the lane will, will certainly exacerbate that. Yeah, so, meanwhile, this mid matchup, I'm super interested to see how it goes down. I'm expecting it to be pretty much skill matchup, so we'll find out who's on top. Of course, Supreme has a couple tools to help him get more lost hits depending on his build. And speaking of depending on his build, do you think that this one... Oh, Bane, what are you what are you doing, Bane? You're already going down? One more auto attack with those sticky napalm. He eats his fairy fire. They have to get another... But it will be our first blood. Earth Spirit doing a good job there. And now Jalopy, he has four stacks. Slowed up as well by the roll in. They're trying to get more sticky napalm onto him, but they will not be able to seal the deal. Yep, well... Spectre is really not a strong hero at this stage in the lane phase this early on in the game and Bane is quite good when it's 2v1 when it has to like on its own harass the off laner or harass the mid hero but the Spectre's not doing much so the Bane ends up 1v2 and it's really not that great in a 1v2 situation. Yeah. So I was gonna ask something and I can't remember what it was so it's not important. Oh, so Invoker, what build? Oh, never mind. We are just murdering in this bottom lane jalopy. Again, up to five sticky name bomb stacks. He will go down. Let's see if they can find him some solemn. Probably not. But there needs to be a change from London Conspiracy in this lane. I mean, the, the good news for them is exactly what we were talking about before. Spectre is a hero that can absolutely come back from behind. 
And if it just kind of, if they stem the bleeding, if they just stop dying, and then just sit back and get XP, get to level 6, and try and get the Spectre back into the game that way, you know, don't forcefully contest the farm in the lane over and over, because then you are going to keep dying. If that's the approach they take, I, I don't, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but it's maybe not the most damaging thing in the world. But on the other hand, you, you do have a Sven that's free farming, and Sven's going to be like... <laughs> You really don't want to get to a position where your Spectre's sitting with like just Phase Boots drum and this this enemy Sven is like S and Y, Blink, BKB. Yeah, Sven, someone who can really, what's the right way to say it, get carried away very quickly. <laughs> he can suddenly be like, oh, oops, we let the Sven form? What's he doing with this crit stick cleaving off of the enemies who uh, don't have evasion? Now, I wanted to ask Invoker, what is the recommended skill? But it looks like he's already revealed to us that he's going Quas Exhort, but I wasn't sure if maybe he would try to go one point in that exhort, and then maybe some Quas Wex, more utility in the team fights. I I think the exhort build is, is probably necessary here, specifically for the it, it really helps them siege to have those void spirits later on, and they don't have. I mean, they've got a Sven, which itself could frontline, but it, oftentimes a Sven wants to like come in and out, be able to blink yeah. onto things, and I definitely do think that their lineup holds to a certain timing when Sven's ready for them to group and push. And I, the Quas Wex Invoker is just does, doesn't really give that. It, it rather gives a pickoff potential, which they've already got in their bat rider. Okay, Sunstrike not going to be on the mark, but again, Jalopy having a hell of a time. Has seven CS, bat has eight, and a couple kills, yep. you know, under his belt. So. And speaking of the Sunstrike, they also have like a exceptionally good draft for setting up Sunstrikes. So that's another reason to be an exhort this game. Yeah, that was the question. It was basically, you know, do you say, hey, we're going to use Lasso or Venge Stun or Stormhammer to make sure we set up Sunstrike kills? Or do we say, hey, I really want to make sure we have Tornado so that we don't get hit repeatedly by stuff like the Enigma uh, Black Hole? Uh, I think they've got more than enough control elements without the Invoker providing his own control. Maybe Knight uh, is hits. not having fun in this lane. He's doing okay on CS, but he is starting to fall behind, especially with the amount of denies Supreme is rocking. Yeah, Supreme saying, when Happy didn't say he feels like Baby Knight, he said he feels like me. And... <laughs> so, meanwhile, <laughs> um, this top lane, we haven't talked Dyer's about it at all. We do see some Courier motor. Come. Really well played there from Kafka. Probably another dive. Jeff, he's down. Yep. Inspector will fall after the courier motor. They catch him again. Eliza realizing that there is no reason for him to be up top. Yeah, there really is none. Ben is getting perfectly good farm anyway. Nature's Prophet still a little bit afraid, even without the Vengeful Spirit there. If you're alternate, then do you try to smoke the Venge and the Earth Spirit? Oh, actually, what? What's this? Okay, we're not actually doing anything on bottom. We will just see a roll in. Mrs. Baby Knight, you know. It's just fine though. Puts the fear into him. They they weren't gonna kill Baby Knights anyway, honestly, even if that roll hits. Oh, they're trying this. to give a kill or kill Batrider on bottom. He does have a one charge, now has two, so he could get that firefly off. And yeah, oh Brain Sap oh yeah, Brain Sap's gonna be more than enough to bring him down. I thought he might be able to wander away. Well, finally something for Lana Conspiracy and it, it does come off the back of the Enigma finally getting involved. Um which is an awkward position that Enigma's in. I mean, his farm is quite decent, but it's not... He, he's behind where the, the optimal Enigma farm usually is. You get like level 6 at 4.5 minutes, and... It's also only the first time that he's been involved. I guess there's been a tension about, like, should he be involved, shouldn't he? And he's run towards the lane, run back, and... Finally does manage to help out the lane, which... Remember, it's, it's because they're running this jungle Enigma that this lane is doing so badly in the first place. So it's, it's very nice if the Enigma can pay the lane back occasionally. Yeah, it's always hard to tell with Enigma... I remember talking to Swindle about this when we were casting some of the Epicenter stuff together, but basically you can get 5 minute level 7 on Enigma, but you also need the, the optimal farming routes and good camps for it, because sometimes you just get camps which don't give you much experience. There's going to be a Firefly coming out of Nisha, but not too much follow up, and actually London Conspiracy just wandering away, maybe thinking about regoosing, no Nisha and the Earth Spirit just going to try to get as much, many of these Eidolons as they can. A little bit of a stun coming out. Onto Earth Spirit, but he should just be able to walk it off. Yeah, Steph style. Not really going to be able to do much. And no, Nightmare comes out onto Nisha. Are they going to pick him off again? They're going for the Earth Spirit. No, Nisha, he is in a lot of trouble. A rock kick on through. There's nowhere for Nisha to go. And a beautiful rotation coming out of Baby Knight. Yeah, and this is something I have seen on Baby Knight's Winter Ninja before. He gets involved from level 6 as soon as his ulti's online and 
making their rotations work. So we'll see if he, he, he keeps managing to do that because in terms of the lane farm itself, he's quite substantially behind the Invoker actually, getting very, very denied. Yeah, I mean, Invoker's almost 1,000 gold ahead, about 800 right now, and Alt uh, Supreme feeling good. He's going to have up an early Midas. That's what he's into. Actually, oh, he went, he went, he didn't go naked Midas, so going to be delayed a little bit there. Now, Sven, I'm expecting the kind of the popular build right now, which is that Sanjin Yasha. Uh, Helm of the Dominator, Sanjin Yasha, then the Blink. Can you see a reason for anything else here? Uh, no, not really. I mean, he might finish trades at some point, but... Do you feel forced it. against a Nature's Prophet to end up eventually upgrading that Quelling Blade to something like the Battle Fury? Just eventually, when you need the slot. Oh, we have a nice little shackle, but Baby Knight actually gonna get kicked away. I don't believe that was the play. L was trying to come in for a stun there, and now the, they may end up losing everything. But they'll catch Kefka. He was getting greedy, looking for Supreme. So, Earth Spirit for a Nature's Prophet turns out to be a good trade for Alternate. Yeah. They're definitely happy with that, and to answer your question before, it's actually a problem that Sven has specifically because of how well he farms. There isn't a... you, can, you can't really go Battle Fury on Sven, it's just no. like, it's like not an optimal build. So, Sven, the closer you get to maxing out, the less opportunity there is to keep a Quelling Blade, and that's just... That's kind of just that, you have to deal with it in terms of your Blink Dagger, and try and make sure you don't get caught in those positions. Beg your team to buy lots of four stocks. Oh. Yeah, I mean, and they've got, got some... Vengeance, but... Yeah, they've got Rock Kick as well. The Boulder Kick will do a lot of good work, right? Because you can knock down trees with that. Yeah, and Bat Rider can burn the trees. That will have a four staff. This is a bench swap. I mean, they've got a lot of tools actually to deal with. Being trapped in the trees and being sad. Yeah, so Kefka, he is doing okay on that off lane. Not, not the best farm we've ever seen, but. Hello. Sorry, my my game is like timing out. Okay, I, I was like minutes. not sure if you had something to say. Yeah, don't worry, you go fix your tech problems. Just tell me when you're ready again. So. Um, hopefully not server issues. Venge sitting in mid, soaking up some experience. We talked about this. Really common with invokers. Once they get the Midas, head over to the jungle. Make sure that one of their supports able to get farm. Of course, she has to be careful to not become food for Baby Knight, but that's... uh. You know, she's gonna play far back, just try to leech that level 6, which before 10 minutes, pretty good. It seems like I'm back in the game now, and maybe Knight is putting pressure on the mid tower with the Eidolons. Could potentially kill it, at least force out the glyph. And he does do that. We have a Spectral Haunt. I'm thinking we're going on the bottom lane. They've used the Black Hole just on the Batrider, but they might be able to catch themselves on Earth Spirit. He is going down. A really nice double pick there for Alternate, and we talked about that. Suddenly, Jalopy, even though he was punished so hard in lane, Sitting pretty with phase boots, a thousand gold just finishes the urn. Yep, not too bad at all. And the black hole's definitely worth it for end kill. There. Early on in the game, I think it almost always is. They're gonna push it into the tower. They, they did lose the tower at the top lane. Yeah, but, but they'll they might probably push too. Yeah, and this is another one of those standard Dota trades. It looks like Exotic Deer may actually be saving up for the blink. Not so sure. While well, Batrider, who was farming so well, still doesn't have his up. Are yeah, he's not too far off though. It's not gonna take him that the, that long to to get there. Oh, top lane. This Bane came in and slept exotic deer, but it doesn't look like there's any follow up. I thought there might be someone else coming in to help. Yeah, he's gonna be a okay. Meanwhile, Enigma Radiant's continuing to farm almost has that mech. That's gonna be a nice little pickup there. And as we talked about, Spectre will eventually actually have that urn over. On himself. That's actually pretty important because of the bits of strength in there. Oh, there's gonna be a smoke in the mid lane. This swap on the TP. Oh, could yeah, be a... there we go. Swap and the stun onto Baby Knight. The Sun Strike isn't gonna hit though. Cold Snap coming out too late. So, Baby Knight gonna be just fine. And oh gosh, Kafka's come in. He's managed just to get the Sprout onto Supreme. He's forced to walk away because these Forge Spirits hit like Traps and Steph style. Has no black hole at this point. So, it's just gonna be a casual Malefice. Oh, he's trying to go again onto Supreme, but no such luck. And a bit of an underwhelming engagement between these two teams there. <laughs> yeah, Wind Ranger is just a difficult hero to gank, and that's all that entire situation really shows you. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, it is the Sanj for Sven. I don't think there's a big problem with Alternate sitting back, waiting for that Blink Dagger on the Batrider. Yeah, there isn't. I mean, it's going to be very soon. 
so I think they're more than happy to wait for it and they probably want to get the rush for themselves quite soon Invoker's at a point where you could just about solo it and with some help could definitely easily take it down um, Maybe that would be the play, get the try push into the bot tower, possibly with a pick off before or during then head into the rush pit and there's, there's a ping there on the, the rush pit saying you know this is a thing we could do sometime Yeah there's I feel like both teams can actually take Roche pretty quickly, uh, since there's so many units on London Conspiracy, but then also alternate, of course, have the Sven with the God Strength and Invoker can add alacrity to that uh, to make sure that this thing falls quickly. Well, Bane wants to use Fiend's Grip, and that's a smoke rotation. They want to finish the mid tower, they've got the Enigma with the mech and the Bane with the Fiend's Grip. So this could be pretty dangerous for Team Alternate. Supreme staying really far back here. I think he understands that they are probably all around him, but the TP... Okay. So we have a TP into the tier 2, while Fiend's Grip is at the ready to get some motoring on. We also don't have Black Hole for 17 seconds. Let me get the TP sound off of the, off of the screen. But both L and Supreme may be too far away to help. Yeah, I'm not sure... I think because Sven is farming the Ancients and uh, they can only see Spectre on the map, I, I think they kind of know that this rotation is happening. They have some, it'll be interesting to see when the game unpauses if uh, if uh, the Ventral Spirit and the Invoker just pull away towards the Sven or they pull away down the lane mid. Because as you say, yeah, the, it's the Batrider TPing in, right? Is yeah, that, yeah, it's, it's a dead Batrider. Yeah. Um, to mention it. What am I looking for? This is also really interesting. We've been... Oh, I cannot draw on the map because we're paused. Oh, I can. I can draw on the mini-map by drawing on the real map. Sorry, I'm having fun. Um, but we... These two wards are incredibly close, again. Um, we've been seeing this, I feel, more and more recently. Where there's, yeah, like, a lot it. of overlap in wards. And I'm just... I mean, obviously, this is to secure the push. They really want this pick-off, but... How much utility do you really get out of this one being so close later in the game? I mean, the one, they, they're for different things. The one is the entrance to the jungle and the other one's to show the towers. So I think it's understandable. They do have some overlap, but that also means that if, if one of them gets sentry and not the other, then you've, then you've got a situation where the team is like, sure, they can't be seen in a place where actually they can still be seen, which is like even more valuable than just seeing people in the first place, is seeing them when they're pretty sure you can't see them. Um... I'm not completely sure that that rider dies here. I'm trying to. Hmm. Probably should, but I think it takes probably the the full channel time of the fiend's grip, and that might lead to a return kill. It's also possible he's going to blink immediately right after he TP's in. I feel like. Wait, it's not the bats. It's the earth spirits. What am I saying? So it's pretty TPing in. I know why you're saying it though, because it's like funky colors. Not great. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. Yeah. the bat though was planning on probably following on this tower. So. But I, I mean, okay, do well, you blow everything just for the ES? They might. I, I mean, well, that puts things in new perspective because the bat can also TP. So I want to say that if they start the Fiends group on the Earth Spirits and everyone's ready. And bat TP's in immediately, and then Voka and Venge head that way. You probably could lose the Enigma and the Bane, and only kill the Earth Spirits, and that doesn't seem like the best trade. Well, of course, you got to remember, like <laughs> with long pauses like this, like any number of things could happen. It could be that right before the pause, they're planning on killing anyone who came out, and now they're like, "But there's been such a long pause. They've had so much discussion about who's doing what that they'll react more sharply." Or, you know, it affects the way people think about things. So I'm not, I really don't know. It could be that everyone just backs off. Okay, and we are good to go again. Um, we're gonna be seeing... Yeah, they do go for the Fiend's Grip, but now this is a lot closer. The Spectre even comes in. Power Shot gonna help finish off that kill, while the rest of Alternate, they're in actually a good position to jump. They know that a lot of spells are down, but Nisha 
Not quite seeing the jump. They don't have Glyph. Oh, he goes for it. He's got Baby Knight. They're going to drop a meatball right on top of Baby Knight, who has to run back through the fire. Here comes the Sven Sten Stormhammer coming up, but he doesn't have God Strength. He's just going to have to slowly smack him down. This is not ideal Steph style. Now on the back lines, they also have a Nature's Prophet Jalopy coming in. He wants Nisha. He's not going to find it. And they actually need to be quite careful because Black Hole is at the ready on Steph style. He might not have much l Oh, goodness, the power shot just off the mark. Jalopy trying to run it away. He's being slowed down. The cold snap comes out. There it is. Uh, going to be a stun. Oh, but the sprout, the beautiful sprout that blocks them. They actually get to cut their way free thanks to the power shot. And so what looked to be a bit of a disaster for alternate t ends up working out. It's really nice. Oh, are they still going? Will they be able to find Kepka? They managed to stun him! Beautiful flame break coming out from the Batrider. And that was fantastic from Alternate. Yeah, and now they get the tier 1 bots, which is going to lead to getting rushed soon after, probably. So everything works out for them. It's a series of smaller, more effective plays. No, like, huge individual, like, this was the play. But it all adds up and works out for them very well. I think that the reason that the, initially the Earth Spirit wasn't protected is just because the Vengeance Invoker had... They'd been afraid that... They, they need to protect Sven was farming Ancients, that's where he'd used his ulti. And so they pulled away towards him, having so many enemies missing off the map, or rather pull away towards the Sven than stay at the tower in case they all appear there. And they're actually going straight into Rush right now. Uh, and it's going to be the... probably the classic safe lane tier 1 for, for Rush trade. Yeah, this is a little bit better for the Dyer, but you've got to do it. I don't think London Conspiracy feel that they can contest after that team fight, and also the Roche already super low. And yeah, very interesting. I see El running around with mangoes this game, and I think he just fed two mangoes to the Sven. I'm pretty sure he just. When they started rushing, the Venge was holding two mangoes, and I think he double mangoed the Sven, saying, Well, actually, because the Sven looked like it had to go all the way to base afterwards. So that's sort of a, a cheap way of having arcane boots, just carry around some mangoes all the time and feed Walking them to your carries when they need to. Fountain. Actually, not a bad idea. This game, I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing a Diffusal Blade coming out from London Conspiracy, and while it doesn't burn a crap ton of mana, you definitely sometimes. Okay, we have TPs. You end up in situations where you don't maybe have the mana orc. Sven, just eating Eidolons for breakfast. Actually, the rest of Ultimate rotated for that, but they're not going to find anything. Yeah. Sven is a hero that famously does encounter mana problems, so it is important to have those arcane boots on your team. They've got wine on the Earth Spirits. The Venge just didn't have the kind of gold early on, so... You know, mangoes will have to do. But, yeah, Spectre will probably go for the Fusal Blade this game, just more than likely only after the, the Mansa style. And before that, it's still going to be the drum. The Spectre is still quite far behind, really far down on the net worth. But we've said it time and time again that what takes his team is winning a big fight, and Spectre will obviously be there because Haunt is Haunt, and the hero gets back into the game very, very easily as a result. It's like any time your team makes any positive move back into the game, the Spectre is always included in it. Yeah, we haven't discussed this at all, but of course there is a net worth lead for alternate, a little over 4,000 and up to 7.5k experience. The majority of that, you could actually say all of that, on the Sven. This Sven is huge, God Strength has been popped, he is just destroying Baby Knight, two smacks and she is dead. They'll get this tier 1 as well. Glyph is thrown out, but they might be coming for the tier 2 right after this. So, woof, alternate, getting some key pickoffs. I mean, this is just how these heroes work. Spectre is a weak laner, so you can punish it in lane. It you can make it have a slow start. Ben is is superb at farming because of cleave, because of the stacks, because of even just cleaving in lane. And so you expect a Sven to have a, a farm lead on a Spectre. The problem is that if Spectre's teammates aren't doing better, so well, Batrod actually catches Nature's Prophet. So I'm speaking of Spectre's teammates, and there's probably a dead Nature's Prophet here. Yeah, what the Spectre needs is teammates that are doing well in positions to make kills. And that's how the Spectre gets back into the game, by haunting and being involved Radiant in all of those kills. But fortified. right now, there isn't, Radiant there aren't a whole lot of people on that team doing well attack. themselves. Like, oh. the wind range is doing alright. Invoka that's... even gets this thing in deny range using the alacrity creep. Like, it's just not great. This goes back to something I was saying in the draft about how, like, I, I just feel like Lana Conspiracy, there's a lot of good things Radiant to We're draft. motoring Jalopy, they... by the way. Yeah, they... I don't know. It doesn't feel like the draft is like a single unified idea, like including a single narrative. Oh goodness, and now Baby Knight is burning to death. Magnetize should get him. That ride is gonna actually come over. And I agree with you on the draft, but this also feels 
one, alternate are playing well. Two, it's hard to tell because alternate's a team I've seen them play some clean games, some not so clean games, but maybe London Conspiracy a bit sloppy. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, I just feel like with the Enigma pick, you gotta know that you're you're picking Spectre. Like the Spectre was the last pick of the draft, right? Wasn't it? Radiance yes. Like, so th they have to know they're gonna have a Spectre with only one support to deal with the Earth Sprint and Batrider, which is just like even though it's Bane, which is quite a good support, it's it's just not enough. Like they have to know the Spectre's gonna struggle. And then for me. Okay, fine, Spectres can struggle, because when your team makes kills, Spectres always involved, gets lots of gold. But then they have to have a plan with their draft for how those kills happen, and... I don't know, Bet sure, Fiend's Group is usually strong for ganking, but that's if the enemy team is, like, split up. Same with the Nature's Prop, same with the Wind Rangers, so... It's it almost like... They're expecting Team Ultimate to split up in ways that give them pickoffs, but Team Ultimate is a team with a spin that's, like, super godlike farm this early in the game and just don't need to. Off of those openings. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, I definitely if London Conspiracy can take this late, and of course Aegis will be expiring soon, so it's not as if Alternate may decide to wait for the next rush before they siege more than just that last tier two and top. But London Conspiracy, as you said, they've got to be careful. They have now got a you know maximum kind of six minute window, depending depending on when exactly Rosh respawns, and. Uh, London Conspiracy, they may have to, you know, make the most of it, get a lot of farm, because Alternate will push with the next Aegis. I'm wondering if Sven's gonna buy a full BKB here or not. I mean, there's quite a lot of things going through it. There's the Fiend's Grip and the Black Hole. And sometimes you do see it, yeah, okay, he just buys it anyway. I mean, you gotta, you gotta force those things out. It's very, very difficult to channel the Fiend's Grip. Actually, very difficult to channel the Black Hole as well at this stage. And... Also, oh, we've got a nice little haunt coming out. Let's see, though. Oh, Staff Style, you're in trouble. The Sunstrike almost kills him. He manages to get the mech off, though. And there is a full channeled Fiend's Grip pretty much going down onto the Earth Spirit. They do end up losing the Enigma. The Meatball, will it hit Solon? Not quite. Exotic Deer, nightmare up. Yeah, that's why he needs the BKB. And Solon will fall here. But that was God Strength. So there's a little bit of space there made. Arguably. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, I maybe spoke too soon. There's Did a storm hammer right? with your name on it. What are you doing? She's gonna get hit up. She's gonna get smacked away by the god string. And I say, what are you doing? But uh, of course, it was nighttime. She did not have vision that exotic deer was coming for her. I just feel like right now, Lana Conspiracy, they can maybe deal with Sven in a fight, but it's gonna take everything they have. Like, every hero has to be on kite the Sven, control the Sven, deal with Sven duty, and. Honestly, there's just there's other things they have to deal with too. There's a super strong invoker as well. There's getting swapped. There's getting caught by the Earth Spirit. There's getting caught by the bats. And this is we had a, another game earlier on that looked very similar to this, which also had a Sven. And this is just kind of like Sven having the game that Sven wants to have, and then the entire game becomes about Sven. Yeah, this is um. Classic. I mean, I don't think it's over yet for London Conspiracy, but they definitely need to be looking at ways that they can efficiently split push with Kefka. He's going for the Aghanim Scepter. This should help apply pressure to their lanes, keeping them in the game longer. Although, of course, the downside being that where will Spectre farm if all the lanes are constantly pushed out by uh, um, Nature's Wrath? The, the Spectre store has the opportunity to farm off hero kills. That's, again, that's normally Spectre wants to get a lot of farm of just being involved in hero kills. And the, the bigger problem for me is that I... I struggle to find ways to imagine that uh, London Conspiracy find those those kills, those pickoffs, or favorable Radiant's fights without Team Ultimate attack. just making mistakes. Which this is yeah, look, it's perfectly possible. It's perfectly po like London Conspiracy's best approach here might be just stay alert and wait for those openings, wait for those mistakes, and pounce them as soon as they happen. But I I think that if if alternates, you know, keep doing what they need to be doing, won't make mistakes and just follow their plan. They looking in an extremely solid position to, to take this game. I also want to touch on, you mentioned Baby Knight maybe not being as solid of a mid laner, but it feels like this game he's had a lot of trouble finding farm. I don't think I've ever seen him as poor as he is on this Windrunner. It just feels, maybe it's just partly because of the great push coming out from alternate, but he just feels like his items are underwhelming. He's going back for the eggs now, having to first go for the Maelstrom because, you know, the push is coming. It's not I mean, great. Supreme denied him a lot in lane, so he was actually a bit under farm from lane. But then, yeah, it, I did talk about this in the draft. There's Enigma that wants to farm jungle. Nature's Prophet wants to farm jungle. Spectre's super under farm, wants to catch up. Like, 
they have a lot of, of farm demand on their team. And the only central theme, as I said before, of, of the draft they have, in my opinion, is that it definitely has a lot of inevitability. They've got a lot in their, in their draft, which, if the game goes super late, looks really good. It's not just the carry specs, it's the way that a hero like Enigma or Bane scales in terms of its control. The wind ranger for the extra DPS, the nature's profit for just having that map control and, you know, access. But it's, right now, that's the only thing they have riding for them, I think, is that, you know, if they somehow get late, they might be doing okay. How, how are they going to get late? Not only how are you going to get late, you're so far behind. A lot of the times when you say stuff like, oh, this lineup inevitably becomes better later on, you're not expecting that they're already at a 15,000 net worth deficit. I didn't realize it was that bad. I thought it was 10. 15,000 net worth deficit, 20,000 experience. On the upside, if this gank it's goes wrong expected. by alternate, they're going to get rich. Maybe. Spectre does have a lot of support. There goes the Stormhammer. Immediately the Haunt comes out. Jalabi gets hit by the Sunstrike. And they back on out. Nature's Wrath going to hit all of them on alternate. They're actually... Some of them pretty low, but they forced out Haunt and Nature's Wrath, and they may consider that a win. Yeah, they'll definitely consider it a win, and it's actually really quick. I think they can commit and kill the Spectre there, but they're very possibly walking into the Black Hole, and I think it's a really good decision that... You know, I thought Spectre would die, but I think it's a great decision that they don't commit, that they do pull out, the Invoker's not there. They position kind of bottlenecked in a way that if they'd all jump forward on the Spectre, they'd, they are walking potentially into a like game-turning Black Hole. This is the saddest Treant. They just had the dominated range creep attacking the Treant. Now it's doing it again. It's so sad. I'm gonna see the Rose respawn. Both teams knew. It was a pretty long one. I think about a minute short of max timer. Yeah. So. Wait, was it a minute? It's very short? hard, actually, for Lana Conspiracy to contest. They don't have the horns there. I mean, I, I almost feel like if alternate rush... Sure, it's like... Let's say Enigma somehow gets in position to just blink in and black hole the whole team. That could be a one fight, maybe. But that's not likely to happen, and there isn't any other way for Lana Conspiracy to contest except by mysteriously finding a way to get the Enigma into that position. I mean, I also want to stress you're fighting into a crit stick now up on Exotic Deer. Actually, he has the full... wait. I don't think you have the full Daedalus. Yeah, he's 500 gold short of the full Daedalus. You've got an Aghanim Scepter already up on this Invoker, who before having the Ags was pretty much causing problems. Now he's just scarier. You've got an Earth Spirit now rocking that mech, so your kind of advantage of your Enigma being so farmed, a bit negated there, since there's a mech on the other side. And Sven finds a DD rune. Happened earlier in a previous game we were watching, like, walk into Russia, oh, there's a DD rune. And... For Sven, it's really great for the. He might have considered using his guard strength for this, but now he definitely doesn't need to, and that means immediately after the getting the rush kill, they, they can just go look for fights. Yeah, there was nothing stopping them now from pushing that high ground. Uh, I guess Sven drops the Helm of Dom for the Daedalus while, while he's still holding the edges. Uh, yeah, we've seen this before, right? You don't need the life steal when you got second life, and you're just gonna have Curia flapping along behind you, the Salamander o Oxalotl, I don't know. Could actually just is. give his Helm of Dom to one of his allies. I guess yeah, he I would actually. Curia to live. I think he would put it on the Venge, except she might be swapping him out of danger, so then, like, she might die instead of him. Like, it's hard with his lineup. Either way, we have a Haunt coming out. Um, it's not gonna amount to too much. Again, it's down. Exotic Deer now just saying, hey, I will take your buildings. He doesn't pop the God Strength yet. He's gonna back up a little bit. Has Warcry again in 8 seconds, so... Yeah, this is a dead tower. We do have TPs coming back from London Conspiracy, but Exotic Deer already got it. Has the Alacrity as well, a nice Shackle coming out, but will this actually delay anything? Exotic Deer at Helm of Health, now just pounding away. Oh, okay, we have a grip onto Enigma, they have to be careful. Oh, Exotic Deer jumps forward with the God Strength, he is pounding away at them. Fiend's Grip comes out onto him, but they're forced to use it for him. They've gotten back Solon, and he's gonna fall on that Bane. Enigma does immediately buy back, still has the Black Hole. Exotic Deer gonna just use that God Strength to pound away. They'll maybe kill off this Venge, but of course she just gives them that negative damage or and now Supreme, he's like, hey, I would like to kill Kafka. Let me just poke away at him. He's actually caught out in the trees here. Not so great. Gonna get forced off away to safety while the Rax is still going down. Enigma nowhere nearby to get off that black hole. And it's looking like, at very least, one melee Rax taken for the price of really Avenge. Oh, and they might find themselves more with this Shadow Blade. What is Nisha doing? He is gonna fall, has a four stop, but is not looking the right way at all. The meatball dropped, and then we get bloody the Enigma. That's a dieback for him. And now Kefka getting beaten down by the Sven, who still hasn't used the Aegis. That, I wasn't sure they were going to be able to get the full lane of Rax, but they easily can here. 
Yeah, I should be able to finish it. Actually, I'm not too sure they want to commit, just because uh, Ben doesn't have the, the ulti or BKB yet. They're coming up pretty soon though. Probably be happy to turn around and get into another fight when they back up. I think an alacrity forged spirit set would have done it. <laughs> but neither here nor there. They're playing it safe and I really like seeing this restraint on alternate. A lot of the times the difference we say exists between the high tier teams and the lower tier teams is that patience. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say. It's gone from bad to worse. There's like... I don't think there's anything that's gotten better. <laughs> For Lana Conspiracy since the last time we evaluated the game state. I think Spectre's gonna be finished in Manta Star now. This is like not the item that helps you fight against this fan. Like at all. <laughs> really doesn't. We might still I look, Enigma still has black hole. Wasn't used in that fight. Died twice, didn't get the black hole. And that's something that you know, there's always that opportunity for the next fight to have a huge black hole and suddenly that makes a big difference. At this point I I want to say that, especially while Sven is ages, uh, even a big black hole probably is not game changing. But it might be like the first step to maybe a second big black hole, which is. I think as well, um, on the upside, there are things like the Ags coming out of both the Windrunner and the Nature's Prophet. And again, they do have decent high ground defense on London Conspiracy. We just need to see something happen this series. It doesn't feel like they've been dictating the pace at all. And obviously it's hard to do when you've got a Sven who doubles the net worth of your next biggest hero. Exotic Deer gonna get shackled here. He still does have that Aegis, I believe he- yeah, he has the Aegis for another full minute. So Exotic Deer actually probably wants to play a little bit aggressively here. Because you want to burn it rather than think you're able to burn it and miss your timing window. And he actually, I don't know if you noticed, he took his Helm of Dom back. He got the Wildkin and the Wildkin's now yeah like tornadoing and, and then he went back to his s and y just like an extra bit of you know efficiency optimization some of these players probably oh we got a nice swap onto baby knight he is going to take a full meatball the stun as well the push back into it there's the grip onto the enigma are we ever going to get another black hole off doesn't look like it fiend's grip the horn comes on out but exotic tears he's still just fine he will go down that that's just the ages and the next person in trouble looks to be the earth spirit he will fall as well but this magnetized solon should be falling unable to get off the brain sap and exotic deer he's back and ready for round two he is just gonna pop that god string start smacking away at stuff he doesn't actually have a way to cut himself free so we're missing some god strength timing beautiful shackle under the tree since he was caught in there but supreme he's like nobody touches my exotic deer there it is going to be a nice storm ball but again the sprout coming out on exotic deer he pops that bkb but they have a lot of physical damage he needs to be smacking things and finally he's going to be able to smack on the rack supreme in the meantime exotic deer just blinks forwards gets away with them uh, l going to just swap his invoker to safety jalopy in a lot of trouble too kafka comes back in exotic deer sprouted again his life is just stuck in the trees he'll finally go down here but another good fight for alternate. Although, this time, London Conspiracy at least gets something. Supreme is not done yet. He has to actually be very careful of taking damage there. Jalopy will be fine. J oh, D. Okay. I think Solon thought he was going to die. And then nightmared him, forcing the mech out. Yeah. Pretty interesting turn of events. There's a Sunstrike. Oh, Sunstrike! Oh my goodness. Supreme is just too good. Yeah, and they had the wildkin there for the vision, so I, I think that's where you get some information to do the prediction. Um, but we it certainly we see a positive finally. Like this is Sven is a hero that gets maxed out so early that it can't have space to eat through trees when it gets sprouted. And I mean it's been very talked about ever since the major, but that was three times in one fight. Sven just got absolutely controlled by the nature's prophet. I mean, this is it's... why, as I said, I know it's not efficient, but, like, you have to keep the quelling play. There's no way. He just... He needs all the items that he's holding. Like, it would be better to have... Like, they could put one of the other heroes on their team. They can afford it at this stage. Like, they could say... Oh, they they expended everything for that. They actually used the Fiend's Grip there to catch out the Earth Spirit. You were saying. But, well, speaking of Earth Spirit, look, he's just bought a quelling blade. Like, he could... Earth Spirit could just be on, like... Okay, stand back, and whenever that guy gets sprouted, you roll in and eat him out. That's like, like that could be his job, and that would be enough. That's how strong this fan is. That like, yeah, they could totally make one of their support rolls just into get me out of sprout roll. 
I was actually pretty surprised. I mean, a lot of that was because the Earth Spirit died early on in that fight, but I was actually expecting it just to be, you save your rock kicks. I know they've got excellent utility, utility, but save one to knock out the trees so that I don't get sprouted. So, Either way, yeah. they are looking incredibly strong on alternates lineup. If you had told me that they would be 20,000 net worth ahead like 20 minutes in, I would not have believed you. I always, you know, I think that they're a strong team. I didn't think they were this strong. Oh, you don't believe in Poland? Is that what you're saying? I think the country exists, Scan. I definitely do. <laughs> you know we've had... There's some famous esports personalities that have said some nasty things about Poland people in the past. So. Hey, don't invoke those names. They'll come and uh, beat us up. Don't do that. So... <laughs> let's... I, I am actually incredibly short, so I can't get into any of these businesses. Scuffles, I'll just get decked. So... No goodness there. But, um, yeah, we are seeing Alternate looking incredibly strong here. And as you said, I really like this. I love, first, first of all, I love that BTS holds these tournaments with some of the smaller teams. Although this round of the BTS EU series has, like, bloody Liquid playing in it. So small names and then Liquid. <laughs> but it's really great. It gives these teams a lot of practice. And you can see it clearly helps them grow as Alternate pound down the lost tier 2. And, uh... I think Lana is supposed to be doing everything they can to split push, try get trades, just delay, 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 force them back. Top tower I don't know if they're going to succeed in this case. Like, I'm pretty sure that uh, Team Alternate know that... Oh, okay, they do succeed. Team Alternate go back. I'm pr pretty sure that Alternate know that it's just Sven getting sprouted and kited so much, which meant that they didn't get more axes in the previous push. But at the same time, the pressure's not... Just because the enemy team wants to delay doesn't mean that the game being drawn out longer is, is automatically bad for you. Like, it, it's more... You know, when I talk about, and you were saying earlier, I talk about, oh, inevitably, Lana Conspiracy's lineup gets stronger if the game goes very late. That's because I, part of expecting it is, part of the expectation is that for it to go that late, they'd have to win some fights along the way to stay in the game. And if that happens, then yes, they, they probably will get stronger. But in the situation where the team that's ahead, like this match is just kind of sitting and getting even further ahead, it's not like there's a certain magical time where the other team is all of a sudden just going to be amazing. Yeah, I think... When you're this far behind, yes, drawing it out to 50 minutes, your team has the advantage, but you're still rocking a Spectre who's got a Monta oh, face. Kefka. Oh, Kefka's what is going on? Oh, Nisha. Nisha with the Invis rune. He also has a Shadow Blade. We didn't touch on that, but that was cracking me up. Nisha standing right on top of Kefka. Is he waiting for the TP? Yeah, he needs someone else. He does. He needs someone else. He can't actually do this alone. And uh, little does he know. Oh, okay, he's going to prop that Firefly. He's just waiting, but unfortunately, the Spectre's about here to be there. Kefka, he's gonna just run over him. There's the lasso. He four stops himself over. He's trying to get someone up, and here comes Supreme. He's gonna come out. Some strike is not gonna hit, but they have enough damage here with the Meatball Deafening Blast to help finish it off. And Nisha had the blink just in case, and now they know that Spectre's nearby. The Loppy already being slowed by those sticky napalm stacks. Yep. Supreme has zero deaths this game. Feeling kind of supreme. I mean, he's. <laughs> we talk about the spin the whole time, like spin has eclipsed everyone else's farm. But actually, I mean, Supreme's so, only like, 4k behind. Like, that's damn impressive. <laughs> like, you, you often see games where Sven or an Alchemist or even maybe an Anti-Mage is like way ahead of everyone else. But if you completely cut out the Sven, the Invoker is also like, 10k ahead of everyone else. Like, that's not... <laughs> that's like... Invoker's doing really, really well this game as well. Yeah, this is... Ugh... Oh. I don't know. This is a game of Dota 2, <laughs> to put it lightly. Um, Sven has finished up the Satanic. He's he's pretty much done. He maybe I can see him, other than obviously eating a Moonshot that's always viable, I can see him maybe at some point deciding to swap out his Blink or something. Maybe the Sanjin Yasha? Okay, he's just going to put it on the Courier for now. But I can see him maybe swapping an item, but other than that, he's kind of good. Yep. And actually, I mean, the metrics only say so much, but if you add Sven and Invoker's net worth, it's more than the entire enemy team put together. That's... to something, at least. Yeah. Not something very good for Lana Conspiracy, who are about to get caught out by probably a vanish swap with that either lens. This is terrifying. They're smoked on your high ground. Like, <laughs> when she starts opening up and attacking this tower, it's not a fun surprise to have. Exotic Deer is just going to give it up. He is going to reveal that they were there all along, and that is one range Rex down. The melee being saved by the trees. Where is that Sunstrike? Not going to actually hit on anyone. There is a nice Shackle onto Exotic Deer, but of course he does have that Aegis at the ready. 
And Glyph has been popped. There's also the bottom range drags. Oh, he pops the God Strength. He's going in hard this time. Shackle and the Nightmare going to disable him shortly. He has the BKB. It doesn't matter though. Invoker is just pounding away at this. Exotic Deer pops his BKB. Somebody needs to get him out of these trees. There they go. Nisha helping him out. The Horde comes out though. Nisha getting pretty low here, but they'll immediately lose themselves. Step style. No black hole. Jalopy's pretty big on the back lines. Exotic Deer has been shackled here, and they will end up losing the Earth Spirit. All five dead. And what are you going to do? Somebody's getting themselves kited. Baby Knight standing right. Right next to Exotic Deer, but not next to enough. Even with Jalopy there, this is Exotic Deer going down. This is a, this is like the beginning is of what what line of conspiracy actually need. These are the kind of fights they need. And Spectre with Manta and the Fuel Blade now there's another 5k gold on top of that. And promising start to a potential comeback. Sure, they they lost their axes, but I feel like that was actually a foregone conclusion. Yeah, I feel like it was always going to come down to their last side of Rax that they need to defend and being able to wipe the enemy team, I think that's very impressive. 9,000 net worth swing in that team fight. I think a lot of it coming down to alternate stood in that midnight pulse. You, like Black Hole, fantastic spell, not going to lie. But also if your enemies st stand in midnight pulse for the entire duration, that is a lot of health gone. Yep. And this is now, Spectre goes back for the Radiance actually, which is... Interesting decision. I wasn't sure if, if that would actually happen. Decides to do it anyway, just for like the the extra sort of general damage output. Not it's not just about it's like for the the AOE. You know, it's not just for the person you're focusing. It's definitely not the best item to buy if you aren't if you're like prioritizing just you, the main specter, the fight that you're gonna be in. Um, but I think that they sense that after the fight that they just won. A big sort of team fight item like that might push them over the edge for the next fight as well. And I definitely think if Lion Conspiracy win another fight, or I don't know, let's say manage to wipe uh, alternates again, they they very possibly could be back in the game. I don't think I wouldn't very comfortably. I mean, okay, technically they're still in the game. They've always been in the game, but they would start having a you know greater than 10% chance to win if they win another fight, they'll probably go all the way up to about 35% from, I think it's about 90-10, I'll go to like 60-40 or 65-35 with one more fight win. I think it's also something where Jalopy got a lot of gold in that last engagement, right? He pretty much got, he already had a lot saved up and he got the defusal and then was able to buy the full Radiance, right? You, there's a lot of things you can block, maybe you stop the Sven from blinking and cleaving, cleaving your entire team, you'll take it. You have to. Yeah. I mean, again, Sven in that fight got sprouted twice and he got shackled twice. And I mean, those are related because sprout kind of leads to shackle, but it's just there has to be more done by alternate to make sure that Sven is attacking an important target during his BKB. Because that's the only time. I mean, they're dealing with the black hole. The black holes never come out. And it's not like he keeps getting fiend scripts or something. He just needs to. He has to just be on top of a key target during BKB. And the problem is that one of the key targets, the Wind Ranger, can just turn on Wind Run. And, Spends already a hero that struggles to, to like fit all the items together. Can't can't fit an MKB. Just just can't. Yeah. So it comes down to like, does he want to be on top of the Spectre? I think that's the I, I, ideal thing for Sven is to just be on the Spectre during his BKB and try and deal with him. I really think this Sven has really big problems. I think I hate to say it, but I'm going back to the he needs a Quelling Blade. <laughs> of course, yeah, there are he, some. I mean, which item do you want him to drop for his Quelling Blade? As and why? Yeah, I don't know. That's like, it's just like, like S and Y is the next item for him to replace definitely with something. But it, if if you if you change your S and Y for Quelling Blade, it's like you accept. Okay, I'm backward scaling in terms of how strong I am actually. In a yes, fight. and I know that even if he finishes it into the Battle Fury, it's diminishing returns. But he's getting caught out so much by these sprouts. Yeah, I think it will. Okay. That okay, works. they managed to get a pick off onto Baby Knight Sven going forwards. I was just talking about this. He's going to three shot. Oh, he can't quite catch Kefka. He is going to be forced to walk on back. Jalopy ran up to him, though. There's the solar black hole just for the Sven. And they have the Fiend's grip as well. Baby Knight fought back for this Sven in a lot of trouble. He is shackled up and he is going to fall. Tornado way too late. Coming out of the Invoker and Supreme not going to be able to save his friend. So that's maybe the key item pick up. And we didn't talk about it for Sven, but he's got the level two travels. What that means is anytime Bat Battle Rider catches someone, that's a guarantee that Sven gets hit off. That's like, I was, I was thinking to myself, how did Sven kill Wind Ranger? Well, it's, it's because Wind Ranger was disabled and couldn't use Wind Run. If they were to do that again, uh, Baby Knight doesn't have buyback now. So, if they catch him again in the next 6-7 minutes, 
It could just be game ending. Yeah, it's... I mean, to say the least, this game is rough for both sides from the standpoint of... Supreme's gonna catch Kefka. Oh. Okay, will he be able to get a pick off here? Kefka taking quite a bit of damage, trying to body block with the tree. He's gonna sprout up onto Supreme, who does not have a full stuff. All he has is a blink. He ends up dropping the meatball. Kefka taking a lot of damage here, but the rest of the lineup is here for Supreme. There's another sprout. Fiend's grip and the shackle. And everybody DCs. Okay, okay, that's not great. This is unfortunate. I mean, I... I don't think that's why this ha this turned out the way it did. I think Supreme was, for good reason, indecisive. Not sure if this is it. Just the positioning, with all the trees obscuring the vision, makes it hard to commit to make that kill and get out. I think if it's like out in the lane, it's quite an easy kill and you get away. But, you know, too much fogging, too many trees around, team managers to come. Supreme's the one who's going to lose Archer for sure. This is... this is actually a terrifying pause. Like... Oh, um, yeah. I'm the pretty sure Supreme's dead, right? There's nothing he can do, but they yeah. might also lose Nisha because of this. Yeah, and the, the team alternate members who are still in the game during this DC will be thinking like, you know, they're, they're busy looking at like a freeze frame of themselves, slowly giving away like a monumental lead. I mean, they've already had that one fight and this will be sort of a stage two. I, I do still think there's is a fight that needs to be won by a line of conspiracy to properly turn the I'm... tables, but... They're definitely getting themselves out of the hole, right? They're still very far behind, but you've got to line up with the Spectre. She doesn't have great D push, but obviously you've got things like the Enigma, you've got Kefka on the Nature's Prophet. Those are all things that help. And this was always, I mean, the one thing that I, that I said from the start was like very convincing in line of conspiracy's draft was always going to be, they've got lots of aspects of their draft which are good at making the game go late and then winning it late and we, we you know we're getting to that point in the game where that's where we are where those things matter a lot the, the sprouts controlling bkb people especially this Sven, the specs are just being everywhere and finding a way to get back into the farm the threat of the black hole the extra carry in the wind range and even just the, the fiends groups have, have, have started to matter a lot so the game becomes more and more about the things that their draft's actually good at the the yeah. better their draft starts to look I'm actually also a little disappointed. I know we have the swap on the Venge, and we now have two four stars up, but I feel like Venge, she went for the Veil, she has a Quelling Blade as well, but a four star on her may also have been super helpful. There is just a lot of business that they're doing to this Fen. We have one back, team. One of them back. Yeah, I don't think Veil is the item in this game. I would have liked to see it Ags on Venge, although I guess that does cost a lot more. Like, not, not for the thing that happens when she dies, I think that's pretty irrelevant. I just think the really short cooldown on Venge swap is, is very valuable in this game. There's an Earth Spirit quite near, so maybe Bat I think can... Bat sh should be able to get out because he does have four staff on CD, so he can four staff out of range of Radiance and Blink, but it's just not great, obviously. This is not how you want your Invoker to go down. And Supreme just says, N. Uh, not ready. Ah, so it looks like his internet dropped. Yeah. Problems? I've had a lot. I actually recently bought a new modem because, uh, well, I'm moving, so I needed a new modem. But also, my modem apparently was so old that they were like, yeah, uh, it can't always connect. And I was like, okay. Why does this effigy of the Earth Spirit say oink? Or kyoink? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a... I don't think he looks a like a personal joke. Yeah, is. I'm trying to examine effigies. They're light on the ground in this dire side. <laughs> not, not the biggest effigies. We got mm. the the stereotypical Superman one. Oh, we got a hoo hoo ha ha. That is an effigy I have not seen before. The hoo 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 ha ha. Yeah, he he remembers a better time when <laughs> all he had to do was pick sniper. And... You know, Baby Knight was probably a sniper spammer, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sniper was... I mean, good times. I miss that sniper, to be honest. Like, I, th I think that the way that it was nerfed was probably not the right way. Like, the hero just got totally killed. I'd have liked for Icefrog to find a way to keep shrapnel exactly how it was and just, like, nerf everything else. Yeah. That so that oh. sniper could just be picked for that, but... Okay, we're ready. There'll be the full stuff. Oh, he actually just goes for the TP out, and they definitely lose the invoker there. Um, obviously... I think, 
I think uh, Ultimate's thinking might start moving towards like we need a plan to actually win the game. And it's dangerous because when your thinking goes that way, you start thinking of like all these like you know cheesy tactics for we'll pick this person off and then we'll just go for their buildings and there'll be nothing they can do. And you and you lose sight of thinking about like how to approach the overall Dota game and just like have an advantage and have a lead. Yeah, I for alternate I think that they have a bit of an easier clearer path forward from the standpoint of they can get pickoffs with the bat rider. They can also have Sven control folks. Hopefully the two with the four stars are able to stay alive and do that for him. But with this BKB coming out of the Enigma, life just got a whole heap scarier. Although, we haven't really seen game-changing black holes so far, I would say. Yeah, no, not really. I mean, there was the one black hole uh, on this fin, which happened recently, which was pretty significant. Without that black hole, they quite possibly can't kill him there. But, it's not, yeah, if, if, if they end up winning the game, it's probably not because of black hole. Like, to some extent, the threats of it in the way that uh, Alternate focused the Enigma in a lot of the fights when they were pushing their axes. That, that probably counts for something. Definitely. Oh, we're gonna have the double, though, the bots too coming in. Actually, both of them. <laughs> this looks ridiculous. Here we go. Batman man manages to get himself some Baby Knight. They are gonna smack away at him. They have to get this kill quickly. There's the Haunt coming out. The Cleave almost enough to kill off Solon. Kefka comes in. Exotic Deer is caught in the trees again, but Supreme kills two on the other side of the team fight. And Kefka, he is also looking incredibly dead, although Spectre's illusions are murdering the face of Nisha. Ice Wall put down. Kefka gonna try to use that ult to get something done, but instead he will fall. Alright, so... That, like... Post sort of 35 40 minutes, all of the successes for alternates have come from these level 2 boots of travel TP onto their Batrider. And it's working out really well for them because the Batrider is mobile. He's got Force Blink, Shadow Blade, can fly over trees, and does make the game a bit more difficult to approach for Line of Conspiracy because all of a sudden you can just be dealing with all the enemy cores in your face. The three kills there, though, that alternate got were worth less than the one kill on Invoker. I mean, that's how far ahead alternate are. Yeah, but now we're seeing only a 15,000 net worth lead. For alternate, I'm a little bit surprised here they don't try to pressure to force out buybacks. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit, but at the same time, it's... I, I think that they're too nervous to push in through mid onto the top racks at this stage. Maybe they could have gone for that bot, finished that range racks. I don't think they would have got there on time pushing the, the top wave in any kind of meaningful capacity anyway. And it looks like, like alternate were hoping that Aegis would re- the Rosh would be back. Yeah, they would have- yeah. It looks like they were hoping they'd get the Rosh, but unfortunately they don't. Did he just- And Sven is- eats in a moonshot. Okay. That's happened. That does mean he doesn't have buyback. Yep, that's true. Now, of course, and... he does flash farm, so it's not too worrisome, but last time when we were looking at things, um, when everybody was dead, on at London Conspiracy, at least everybody who was dead had buybacks, so. Ben's buyback is also not necessarily as valuable as many heroes' buybacks. Um, Spectre's buyback, for example, is huge. Spectre, often you see Spectres deliberately go into fights and like throw themselves in the front lines, die, not use the ulti, and then buy back and haunt back in, and can be game winning. But here we see another move with a smoke from alternates, and Batrider catches an important hero. Could be pretty big. Oh. Yeah, we'll Opposing see. He's side. trying to wrap on the side. Oh, goodness. He's going to grab the Bane. There's going to be the Haunt coming out. BKB immediately popped by the Enigma. He wants this Black Hole. There is one right there, but he's not quite able to get in range of it. Can't to Oh, he does. He manages to get it on Exotic Deer and onto L. An Exotic Deer in a lot of trouble. Finally drops that BKB, but he is stuck in that Fiend's Grip. Now there's a Sprout and Exotic Deer. It's not looking like he's getting out of this one alive. Spectre is murdering everyone's faces. Supreme will get a kill here, but it is not enough. And again, a full team wipe for London Conspiracy. You know all those things in the draft that we said were good against Sven? They're really showing up now. Like, you can't attack the Wind Ranger because of the, the Wind Run, and you're getting Black Hold through your BKB, you're getting Sprouted through your BKB, you're getting Fiend's Grip through your BKB. And wow, I mean, I this is what I said in the draft, like, it's maybe it's misleading sometimes to look at those things, because the points in the Sven is how far he gets how quickly. And at this point, I'm starting to think that that's, you know, the, the window is closed maybe for Team Alternate, or certainly it's about to be closed. They had that gap where, the farm lead was so intense 
that they could close out the game. And now the farm lead is getting smaller and smaller and suddenly all these things that deal with their spin actually do just deal with their spin. Yeah, unfortunately they're going to lose out on this rush on Supreme buys back, desperately trying to defend their top lane, but London Conspiracy doing good work for coming back from a 30,000 net worth deficit. Aegis picked up by Jalopy, finishes off that heart, able to upgrade that defusal, get some new charges and some more stats. And it's just, uh, it's got to be frustrating being this Sven. I don't know, you, you're like, every time you go, you're back and look at your inventory, Double like, what damage. can I change that? I know you're a big advocate of swapping out the SNY for the Quelling Blade, but at this point, it's it's not just about yeah, the Sprout. It's, it's about... It doesn't matter at this point in the game, you're right. I mean, you you actually might be right that there was a, like that one fight where you got Sprouted three times when they were pushing mid. In that particular fight, if he had a Quelling Blade instead of whatever else it is that he had, maybe it was the SNY, I don't remember if he had Aegis then. Like, they could have won the game there, maybe. Like in that in that particular fight, a so Quelling Blade or Battle Free, I, I actually admit it's would have been in the build, <laughs> but that that window is long gone. I think it's also difficult to kind of say the what if. It's also especially hard for the players. You think that you've got enough utility, you have a bench for goodness sake, you have an Earth Spirit, but it just ends up not working out. There's going to be the casual haunt because they want to make sure they kill Supreme dead, and he goes down. Stolen gem doing work. Yeah, it's. I mean, Nature's Prophet has... Ags and Octarine online for a while, and all the waves are pushing. It's dangerous to split up when you push them out because you could get picked off. You need to make your own pickoffs before you push. There's all of these like elements that Lanarkus Prisci's draft has to sort of passively control the flow of the game have all just like come into effect in the last 10 15 minutes. And it's very difficult right now being Team Ultimate. The Invoke is dead, he doesn't have buyback, and it's like also might super just... detrimental to your next game. This is the best of three, and you are up 25,000 net worth. These teams can tell. They're good enough. They know about how far ahead they are. So they know that this one was a game they had in the bag, that they no longer do. Jalopy playing very far up, of course, has that Aegis, and even without it, how do you take down a 3k health Spectre? I mean, this is something that happens in the current patch quite a lot, actually, in pubs and pro games. Teams with big leads end up th throwing them. It's, I think it's more common than was before in the Oh, there's going to be a swap out onto the window. L throwing the stun, but of course Shackled up, going to be just burnt down by the Radiance. And now they're going for more. Earth Spirit in a lot of trouble, needs some sort of escape route here, but it looks like he is just going to be eaten up by the Spectre instead. Jalopy throws out the Spectral Dagger, not quite enough. Meanwhile, Sven does manage to get Rax in two lanes. And nobody's stopping him. No Sprout this time. Nature's Prophet coming in trying to land one of those bad boys, but unable to. And they just need to delay. They need to make sure that they don't lose that many racks as well. Steph Style jumping in, trying to throw out that Malathus. And uh, we still have a lane of racks up in this mid area. Sven throws out a stun. Jalopy, of course, does have that Aegis. But I think this is going to be two lanes of racks for London Conspiracy as well. Yep. Middle and are under attack. times are tough for Team Ultimate. They they can still win one or two big fights and suddenly Dallas win the game. Middle they can do it. You know, if Mana Conspiracy position badly and Sven suddenly just cleaves the whole team to death, that, I mean, these are things that can happen. But I'd say Lana Conspiracy are pretty comfortably ahead at this stage. Yeah, and suddenly, oh, we're gonna have a Batrider grip onto Kepka. They know if they can pick up this Nature's Prophet, they don't have to deal with all this Sprout business. They're going for it, but instead, there is the Haunt coming out, and Kepka, they get him with the cleave. They're also gonna manage to kill off Invoker, though he's dead again. No buyback. The ult coming out from the Nature's Prophet. Oh my goodness, the exotic deer brought down by the black hole. It doesn't matter that it only hit on one. That's the one they needed it on. He buys back, doesn't have God Strength for this fight. They're gonna lose the Earth Spirit, who doesn't have buyback, and that may just be it. London Conspiracy have done it. Come back from a 25,000 net worth deficit. Yep. Looks like it. And, uh, I mean, for all I said darting their draft, the one thing that was very clear from their draft is that it's, it's good at doing this. <laughs> it's good at, like, just making it that long and then, you know, for various reasons, putting the enemy team in an awkward position where they can't close out the game and then turning the corner and start carrying them. It's, it's definitely good at doing this. It almost feels like it sounds bizarre, but it almost feels like to some extent they drafted with, with this kind of scenario in mind. This is a thing that could happen. 
And Exotic Dia will fall here. GG's are called and we're headed into game two with London Conspiracy up a game. So I, yeah, I don't well, think we have much to say. Well, I will just say that Fnatic against OG at the Shanghai Mage, I don't know if you remember, they, Fnatic lost a game with an even bigger lead than this and we were like, oh, I wonder how it's going to affect their mentality going into next game. And they came out the next game and they just stomped. So it, it, there are teams that can do it. You know, it, it could be Team Ultimate go back and recognize we have that one in the bag. We're better than these guys. Let's not be bothered. Or or they could tilt terribly. I, I don't know. Yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes. Either way, they did play really well coming into that early game. Unfortunately, London Conspiracy did a fantastic job of holding it. Either way, folks, just game one. Once again, I'm Llama Down Under. I've been joined by Scansel. We can be found by those names on Twitter. And let's get you all into game two. Please enjoy the short break.